So welcome back to another FIFA 21 topic video. Today we are talking about the new things that are coming in FIFA 21. There's been a lot of announcements. EA has done a lot of pitch notes detailing a lot of the new features in the game. And I thought I'd make one big video going over all the new stuff EA announced for every game mode in FIFA 21. Hopefully I don't miss anything, but I can guarantee you that I'll be going over all the major new features that you need to know about anyway, so you don't have to worry. Now, if you do find this video useful, please leave a thumbs up because it always helps the channel. To get all the latest FIFA 21 news and content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to get to 200,000 by the end of the year, so please help me out by subscribing today. Today's video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is the best app to get all the latest football news and live updates. They've got a new and improved app and they want you to try it out. It's cleaner, simpler and smarter than ever. Now, now this app is the only football app I've got on my phone because it covers everything. So if you want to try it out for yourself, make sure you use my link in the description. You can download it for free. So let's talk about the new gameplay features coming into FIFA 21. I'm going to break this video up into different game modes and stuff. So for gameplay, we've got agile dribbling, which is one of the biggest things this year. It's a brand new way to keep close control of the ball in FIFA 21. Now this was seen in the trailer. You can see players like Son doing like crazy skill moves here and there. Pretty hard to tackle them by the looks of it. I don't know if this is going to be overpowered. Some people say it's unrealistic, but they've added it into the game regardless. Another new feature in FIFA 21 gameplay is creative runs. EA this year has decided to include new options to influence how your AI teammates move off the ball, providing more creative ways to break down the opponent's defense. So we've got directed runs, which is basically you taking control over the direction of the runs of your teammates by flicking the right stick after triggering a run. There's also a directed pass and go and a player lock, which means you lock onto a player and the AI tries to find you with a pass. So pretty much these are the new ways that you can control runs in FIFA 21 gameplay. Positioning awareness is another new feature in FIFA 21 gameplay. Players are going to be better when making onside and offside runs. They've got better awareness now to know when to slow down and you know drop back to stay onside. They're also going to time their runs a bit better now. So when you're ready to pass the ball, they're going to be right on their way. They're also going to know how to open up space a bit better now. They're also going to do fake runs in the box. So you'll see them run into the box and then drop back for a cutback. And on the defensive side, you're going to see your defensive midfielders and stuff cutting down passing lanes just better tracking overall. Smoother Encounters is also a new gameplay feature. EA says to promote a smoother game flow in FIFA 21, we created new animation systems and combined them to better decide how players interact physically with each other. This will reduce the amount of chaotic situations in the game. Now I want you to take a look at these two examples. This is the first one. As you can see in FIFA 20 on the left, it's a bit of a mess. Players falling over, you know, the ball doesn't get cleared. But in FIFA 21, you can see it's less of a mess. The players aren't falling over each other and the defender manages to clear the ball as well. And take a look at this second example, a midfield battle. Uh, you can see that the players are just falling over each other, colliding with each other. But in FIFA 21, it's much more cleaner. And basically that's what they're saying. It's going to be smoother. Now there's also a new thing called the competitor mode, which is basically going to be built on top of legendary and ultimate difficulty. If you find them too easy in FIFA 21, you can now enable this mode if you want to seek a harder challenge. Here is some gameplay of that competitor mode, and obviously it looks very, very overpowered. You can't get the ball off and by the looks of it, but some people find, you know, legendary ultimate too easy. And this is the next step for you, man. But I would stay away from this because currently, you know, ultimate difficulty is pretty overpowered as it is. But you never know, competitor mode could be better than ultimate difficulty because it does refresh the CPU AI and makes them play like a normal human. There's a new feature called manual headers as well. EA says in FIFA 21 to improve the viability of scoring with headers while keeping a skill gap in the game where you're introducing manual heading. To enable this option, a player would set the assisted headers option to off. And basically what this is going to do is let you take control of heading. You know, heading in FIFA 20 didn't exist. You know, it was very hard to score a header. And this setting basically lets you take control and maybe give you a better chance of scoring some headers in the game. So let's talk about crossing now. There are a number of new crossing trajectories in FIFA 21. So you can do a whipped cross now, which is inspired by Trent Alexander-Arnold. They're going to be fast and dangerous crosses. There's also driven cross as well, similar to whip crosses. This cross is also fast and dangerous, but tends to travel at waist height, being ideal for a volley or a shot. And then finally, there's also ground driven cross, an extremely fast cross that travels on the ground. There's two new skill moves in FIFA 21 gameplay. There's a bridge skill and there's also a directional nutmeg. Now you can also cancel foul advantages now, 
which allows you to ask for the foul instead of keeping the advantage of the play. So you hit the L2 R2 button and you know you can take the free kick instead of waiting for the referee to call it. There's also instant hard tackles. So instead of like having to hold and power up your tackle, you can now perform hard tackles instantly. You can call players into the box for goal kicks and you can do a hard super cancel now, which is much better than the current super cancel system in the game. And they've also increased the number of normal skill moves that you can chain up to. It's now going up to six instead of three. And in terms of all access skill moves, every player in the game now can perform right stick skill moves, but of course the effectiveness depends directly on their rating and attributes. So each player in the game can perform a low skill roulette, a low skill heel to heel, low skill feint and exit, stop and turn, drag back spin and simple rainbow. Now I don't know if this is going to be good because I don't want to see Harry Maguire start doing like roulettes and heel to heels because in real life you don't really see him doing that kind of stuff, but... Maybe it makes it more fun to play. I don't know. We'll have to see when I when I try it out. And then for kickoff only, they've added in this rewind feature, which allows you to go back in time and replay in-game moments. This will not be in crew mode or anything like that. Ultimate team, nothing like that. It's just kickoff only, and it's going to be inside the instant replay setting. Now for Serie A, they're going to play the Serie A anthem when the teams walk out, and you can also choose between real or synthetic grass for the playing field. In addition to that, it is now possible to select the shade of the grass among different types of green and the color of the lines to increase its visibility. And then for the next-gen version, they've got some controller haptics which are going to be feeling very nice in the hands, you know what I'm saying? They've also reimagined player bodies, they've got stats-driven player movement, off-ball humanization, game day immersion and pre-game cutscenes outside of the stadium as you can see with this Liverpool photo. We've also got some new celebrations coming into the game from players like Mbappe, Haaland, Bergwijn, Deli Alley, and that's pretty much the new features coming to gameplay this year. So of course there's going to be many many more new faces in FIFA 21 gameplay but let's move on to pro clubs next. And uh, there's only two main things to talk about here. Pretty much this year, you're going to get AI player customization, which will allow you to customize the AI players in your club. You can change the visual appearance of the player, the name, and the kit. Here are some screenshots. As you can see, there's some sort of menu there which lets you pick the player. And then you can basically just tweak whatever you want. As you can see, kit numbers, nationalities, names as well, and the appearances as well. You can play around with that and even animations like goal celebrations and stuff. So I think that's a useful feature. But the second feature for pro clubs is going to be tactics. This one is sort of borrowed from the normal FIFA gameplay. You can basically have the presets now, like ultra defensive, defensive balanced, attacking and ultra attacking. And you can customize each game plan to fit your team's needs and play style. In the background will be some screenshots. But as you can see, you know, two major changes for pro clubs. There should be more. It's basically like EA saying to career mode people, we've added the visual sim, we've added training, all right, you should be happy, like, that's not acceptable, and I can see how pro clubs players, while they'll, they'll find these features useful, they'll still be frustrated with the lack of new features in the game mode. So let's talk about Volta, everyone's favorite game mode. They've energized skill moves, so one to three star skill players can always perform basic combos like the one you're seeing on your screen right now. You can flick the ball up in the air with a press of the R3 button, and if you flick it with the left stick, you can go in different directions. Four and five star skill players perform a variety of moves, such as a five flick, ball roll flick, rainbow ball hop flick, sombrero, and more. And there's footage that you can see there. And then if you're an exclusive five star skiller, you can perform around the world flick, drag back flick spin, and ball roll flick spin. And there's footage of that in the background. They've also introduced Agile Dribbling, which is what we've seen with the normal grass gameplay. So they're bringing that to Volta as well. So this should make the game feel more arcadey, a little bit more fun to play. I don't know. They've also brought in some nutmegs. So you can do new nutmeg controls. So basically what you're seeing on your screen is some footage of that. They've also improved the shooting. So long shots have been tuned and improved. And you can pull off more powerful shots from many angles. If there is a match without a goalkeeper, the players will need to be more precise because shooting will be manual. There's also defending improvements. In matches with goalkeepers, you can use outfield players to block passes and neutralize attacks with all new blocking animations which aim to make defending more rewarding. If there's no goalkeeper, the players won't just stick a leg out for the sake of doing it. You'll see them blocking a bit better now as well. They've also improved the attacking intelligence. So you'll see players making better runs, opening up the space, and it should create more opportunities for you to score and counter-attack. You can also play online in Volta now. This one is a big feature for the mode. It says in Volta squads, you can head online and dive into community drop-in matches, squad up with a group of friends, or play solo. Whatever your preference, everyone competes together in the same online mode. There's also featured battles, which is very, very similar to squad battles, but obviously tuned to a Volta mode. 
There's also a new story mode, which is called The Debut. It's going to feature Kaká and some street legends. It's designed to help FIFA players better understand the mechanics of Volta on and off the pitch. It's a two to three hour cinematic experience, and you'll see new locations, grow your avatar, learn strategies, and much, much more. Speaking of locations, they've added five new ones. Sao Paulo, Paris, Sydney, Dubai, and Milan. And there's also a new menu in Volta. It's going to be similar to Ultimate Team where you have that navigation bar at the bottom. So let's move on to some Ultimate Team stuff next. This is going to be a summary of the new features coming to that mode. So the first thing is foot co-op. So that means you can play with your friends now in squad battles and division rivals. Now if you go into division rivals as a co-op, if you're in Division 9 and your friend is in Division 5, you will be versing Division 5 sort of players. That's how the matchmaking is going to work, but your progression is going to be based on you playing in Division 9, if that makes sense. You can also do co-op in friendly matches, so you can play Mystery Ball, King of the Hill, all that kind of stuff with a friend as well. And there's also foot events. There's going to be community events where everyone works towards a certain goal and gets rewards. And team events as well where EA will set up some sort of team thing. You have to select a team and work towards a reward or something like that. There's going to be foot stadium which is one of the biggest things they've added this year. And it should be in future career modes man because this is a great feature. Instead of using a standard stadium that you get out of a pack or something. Foot stadium grows alongside your club in ultimate team now. And you can truly edit to you know, customize it the way you want. And uh, you start with a first tier, which is very, very basic, but I think everyone is going to start with that thing. And then as you get into different uh, levels and stuff, uh, you'll be getting a tier 2 stadium. And then when you play in, I think, weekend league or foot champions or something, you can get a tier 3 stadium right there. Now, these stadiums are going to have different customization options, and there'll be a menu for that as well. You can add trophies on the sides, chance as well. Uh, tifos, all that kind of stuff, and it definitely is a great feature to have in Ultimate Team, but it should also be in career mode as well. There really is no excuse for future career modes not to have this stadium upgrade feature. Even if it's just for the generic clubs, I think you could do some great stuff with this in career mode as well. In Ultimate Team, they've also expanded the top leaderboards, so there's not going to be a top 100 anymore, it's going to be a top 200 now, so 100 more people. If you play Division Rivals, it's going to be similar to Squad Battles, where you can only have up to 30 matches now, which contribute to your weekly rank. And there's also a new menu system in Ultimate Team designed to make things more easier to navigate around. So there'll be two tiles and a navigation bar underneath. They've also removed fitness and training items, which means all players in Foot 21 will start every game at full fitness. So you don't have to worry about that. And there's also 11 new icons, Kantana, Cole, Czech, Eto, Torres, Lam, Puskas, Schweinsteiger, Sukha, Vidic and Chavi. So let's talk about career mode next. This is probably one of the modes that got the biggest changes this year. But these are all the new things coming to the game mode. So we've got interactive match simulation. As you know, this is the visual sim. You've probably seen it 50,000 times already. But what it's going to allow you to do is instantly jump in and out of the matches now. Before you start a match, the game will tell you the opponent's predicted lineup. So if you want to make any last minute adjustments, you can do that. There's also going to be automatic kit selection and also controller selection as well. Player growth this year will be determined through XP accumulation based on how well they do in matches and their potential to grow. The XP is then given to the player's attributes determining the growth over time. Now by default all players will be placed on a balanced plan but if you want to change that there is certain options to change uh, you know, characteristics in a position. And each characteristic is going to improve certain attributes on a player. And it also takes a couple of weeks or many, many weeks to get the program done. There's also a new player position conversion system, which allows you to change the position of your players. If you want to make Trent Alexander-Arnold a striker, you can do that in FIFA 21 career mode. Obviously, it might take a long, long time. You have to look at how long the program will last for. But different conversions will affect different attributes. You can also upgrade, I think, skill moves and weak foot now as well on players. You can also do the player development and position conversions for players in your youth academy as well, which would be pretty nice for a lot of you guys. There's also a new active training system, which is going to focus on improving match sharpness. Finding the balance between increasing match sharpness and maintaining player fitness will be crucial in career mode this year. If you take a look at the screenshot, you can now train up to 15 players in a day, which is going to be a big upgrade over five. And each drill that you set for your players will affect their fitness and their sharpness. So that's why I say it's going to be important to find the balance. Now, sharpness is a new thing that ranges from zero to 100 for each player. If it's at 50, that means they're not going to receive a boost or a penalty on their attributes. If you have a player with 50 and above sharpness, or 51 and above, sorry, they're going to receive a boost to some of their attributes, as you can see in the photo there. If the sharpness drops below 50, that means that they're going to be penalized. So you're going to see attributes dropped on a player, which will definitely affect their performance. Now, alongside the sharpness, 
a player's overall is going to be affected by morale and also playing in his preferred position. So if you put a player out of position now, their overall is going to decrease a lot. You can also take control of your team's schedule now. So if you want to give them rest days, recovery days, or training days, you can set that up during the weeks. And obviously finding the balance between resting and recovering and all that is going to be crucial as well. In the transfers department, they've added in the loan to buy option, which was from old FIFA games. They've brought that back now. And they've also introduced AI player swap proposals. So opponents can now ask you for players from your squad and you can do the same. So there's going to be some proposals there. With the Youth Academy, when you take on a club, you no longer have to start setting up a Youth Academy forum. You're going to have already a Youth Scout hired and a number of players already recruited into the Youth Academy. When you set up your career modes, there'll be a financial takeover system where you can set a big budget or a little budget depending on how much money you want. I think it goes up to 500 million. And there's also a negotiation strictness. So if you want to have a very, very strict career mode where you can't sign anyone you look at, then this is going to be for you. When it comes to retiring players, they've now made the age closer to 40 years old now. So you won't see players at like 35, 36, maybe retiring. You'll see them go into the 40s now. And they've also added in some countries where you can send your youth scouts to, such as Wales, Ukraine, Serbia, Albania, the Baltics, and more. And they've also updated the database of names for youth players, and they've increased it to over 5,000 first names and 8,000 last names. Now in FIFA 21, Career Mode EA is going to add new backgrounds that are branded specifically to the league. You can see some examples already when you go into team management, when you're playing in League 1. If you're in the Premier League for training days and stuff, you can see different things in the calendar as well. When you put a player out of position in Career Mode, you're going to have an exclamation mark on top of their player icon now. This indicates that you need to switch his position because his overall is being affected. There's going to be some new stadiums in FIFA 21 as well. You can play in Leeds United Stadium called LN Road. You can also play in Boca Stadium, Independiente Racing Club and San Lorenzo Stadiums. There's more stadiums as well like PSV, Benfica, Porto. I'm waiting for EA to announce all the stadiums before we actually talk about stadiums, but those are the ones that are currently floating around. There's a new beard when you do your virtual pro. You can now put this beard on him in pro clubs and also play a crew mode, probably manage a crew mode as well. EA has confirmed that they're going to be updating the French broadcast packages for League 1 and League 2. Now, League 1's one could look like this. It's been recently announced, so hopefully EA puts this one into the game. There's new broadcast stories which will be picked up by the commentators during matches. So things like Manager of the Month, award winners, debuts of high-profile youth players, milestones, players facing their previous clubs will all be picked up by the commentators now. There's also new localized stadium announcers, so when you play in different countries across Europe, it'll feel more authentic as the intro and specific moments in gameplay will include local languages. So French, Italian, German, and Spanish are some of the listed ones there. There's going to be authentic goal music, so when you're playing at certain stadiums for different teams, you're going to hear the authentic uh, goal music. That happens in real life as well. And there's also iconic atmospheres, so things like Liverpool's You'll Never Walk Alone, that's going to be for different clubs now in the game as well. So before the match starts, you'll be hearing authentic atmosphere like you would in real life. So those are the new features that will be coming to each mode in FIFA 21. Hopefully you did enjoy this little recap video summarizing everything. If you need something else to watch, please make sure you check out this FIFA video. Hit the card in the middle, it'll take you right there. I'll see you next time.